Nature's wealth, good for your health. This is the Raw Life Health Show. Raw Life, brighten up your life. When I first came here, my cholesterol, my, my bad cholesterol was high, and that was being on a strict raw vegan diet. Can you explain why that might happen? Well, I will have to speculate on that. Uh, so an intelligent speculation or an educated speculation would be that your total cholesterol probably was low altogether, and you may have a genetical uh, situation where your system, your genes dictate to make more of the bad cholesterol, the low density lipoprotein, than say the good cholesterol, the HDL, high density lipoprotein. So I think that's that's what it is. And uh, with uh, adding, or with the addition of animal products, just your diet by itself will increase your healthy cholesterol balance. So really cholesterol is not a, a big culprit, it's only, and even the, the LDL, the bad cholesterol, is not the biggest culprit in coronary heart disease. There are some other uh, coronary risk factors which are all, of course, uh, tested for in the longevity profile. So you say raising my good cholesterol to offset the high bad cholesterol is more important than lowering the bad cholesterol? Well, that's... Uh, Generally, what we know today, and, and there's been a lot of studies on it, that the bad cholesterol is actually contributing to coronary, for, to plaques, to arterial stenosis, to hardening and, and the narrowing of the arteries. And to counteract this, the good cholesterol helps to carry this away. And if, if somebody has a low cholesterol to begin with, they usually have a very low HDL, good cholesterol as well. So, so one needs to have a cholesterol somewhere between 160 and 200. If your cholesterol is below 160, that will make an individual more susceptible to cancer and also to cerebral hemorrhage. You know, that means like a stroke. And the, of course, a, a low total cholesterol also very well, much will affect a person's general hormonal uh, uh, support. Sex hormones will be low and all kinds of consequences will be derived from that. So you're saying low cholesterol is actually more dangerous than high cholesterol? Well, yes. Wow, wow. Cholesterol is really just a tall cholesterol is really, I don't think tall cholesterol is really a culprit. The low LDL cholesterol is a sticky substance and that, that together with homocysteine and uh, uh, platelets and... Uh, uh, other clotting factors and things uh, will contribute to a coronary plaque and an arterial sclerosis and eventually possibly a heart attack and or a stroke and death. Well, as a homocysteine level you mentioned, is there any, uh, any connection between a high homocysteine level and a vegetarian diet, a vegan diet? Because when you did my blood work, it was, it was high, and I've been on a raw vegan diet. I don't know whether any has been demonstrated or not. I don't know anybody studied that or not. I think that's a very good question, but I will say yes. And, and the connection is that to properly metabolize homocysteine, which is a sticky substance, again, will contribute to arterial sclerosis and hardening. To metabolize this correctly, a person will need quite good amounts of vitamin B6, B12, and folic acid. Now, you know, uh, some of these vitamins are n not abundantly available from a vegetarian diet. One of them, of course, is, will be B12. But, but also to get the good enough doses of B6, for instance, the richest source is liver, uh, animal liver. The folic acid, you, you probably can get plenty from veg vegetarian, you know, vegetable sources. Have you ever heard of, or do you see any, uh, from a biblical standpoint, do you see any issue with uh, uh, giving, taking blood or giving blood uh, for a test, or that's never uh, come up in your studies? I don't see any anything. I, I can only say that uh, people think a lot of things, and so oftentimes people omit or ignore the fact that we are created with... Uh, brains and a certain amount of knowledge, we need to seek knowledge and without doing blood tests you really cannot be on, on a straight healthy path. So I am very certain that our Creator 
is very pleased that finally we discovered taking blood and testing it so we can adjust our, our health path. Uh, okay, can you explain, uh, when I first met you, you told me a lot of the laboratories that were out there doing blood tests today are garbage and there's many issues with many of them places. Can you explain the difference of not just your amazing longevity blood profile test and your cancer profile test, but the difference in the quality of the, the way you test versus the average uh, place out there that does blood testing? Well, that's an easy question. We've been dealing with a, a number of gigantic uh, national laboratories. We don't do all tests here, but for the longevity profile and cancer profile we do. But sometimes we, we are requested to do some tests which we don't do in-house. And the results are sometimes astonishingly wrong. Just to give you one example, my technologist was uh, almost four months pregnant. She went to her doctor who was managing her pregnancy, gynecologist, obstetrician, and they did a blood test on her and the results came back and she came back being not pregnant. Her tummy was already somewhere around here this way. So the doctor's office calls and, and tells her that, uh, well, you are not pregnant. And we have seen so many, many other, for example, we tried the number of, of laboratories. I can only tell you that what we are doing here is good. And I think we are blessed to, to do this work as is what we are doing because I know that we are helping people with love and care and scientific background and knowledge. We, I am convinced that regular blood workup particularly on a large scale like the longevity profile, is a necessity. It seems to me that's an obligation that I keep track of my biochemical health. That's an obligation because my body and, and its health, my body and a healthy body is carrying the spirit. I, I can tell you about uh, I think it's 1 Corinthians 9.27 where Paul is talking, is saying that like an athlete I torture my body, make it do things, not what it wants to, but what it needs to. Otherwise I feel that I will be declared unfit and put aside, put out of the race. Now you know Paul was a, in, a, in a sense an athlete, he had a tremendous physique and, and uh, he worked out and of course, his race was to teach and preach the gospel, and without the physical body, he could have not done it, and that's what he had realized. And you know, I believe that, the, and this is how I feel, and the only way I can really keep track of my physical health, not that I'm feeling well, not that I practice martial arts, not that I bicycle just about every other morning, early in the morning, not that I lift weights, not that I swim competitively, Still, some things may be inside that I will not know until I become sick. And I don't want to wait for that moment. And this is why I am personally doing the longevity profile twice every year, every six months. Now, I know it has some expenses involved and I don't pay for it because I'm the laboratory director, clinical laboratory director here in this laboratory and, and, and also some other laboratories. So, in a sense, it doesn't cost me anything, but just to give blood is a big thing for me. I hate it, and I hardly can stand it, but it is so important that I do it, and I keep track of myself. So, if you think this is a good enough reason what I'm saying, I think you probably want to engage in, at least initially, to see, are you, so far, what are you, 30, 40, 50, 60, 80 years old, you know, where are you now? And that will give you some directive probably for the rest of your life, even if you don't do a follow-up. This is Dr. Shandell, the clinical laboratory director of American Metabolic Laboratories in Hollywood, Florida. I wish you a great healthy day and a, a great raw life. Nature's wealth, good for your health. This is the Raw Life Health Show. Raw Life.